Have you ever wondered if you can use the iString localizer interface outside of a controller in ASP.NET Core? If so, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into how to use iString localizer in different classes. I totally get it. It can be confusing when you see examples that only show iString localizer being used in controllers. You're not alone in this. Many developers have the same question. Here's the specific question we're addressing. One user asked, what is the correct way to use a string localizer in a class that does not derive from controller? They also wondered if it's always necessary to pass in an iString localizer or iString localizer factory to the constructor. Sound familiar? Let's explore this together. So, what's the deal with iString localizer? This interface is designed for localization, allowing you to retrieve localized strings based on the current culture. Understanding how to implement it outside of controllers can enhance your .NET project significantly. And stick around. I have a great tip at the end that will help you implement localization more effectively in your projects. To use the eString Localizer interface in a class that does not derive from controller, the user should first inject the iString localizer into the class through its constructor. Next, the user should store the injected iString localizer in a private field within the class. This allows the user to access localization resources throughout the class methods. Now, the user can utilize the iString localizer within the class methods to retrieve localized strings. This is done by calling the localizer with the appropriate key. Regarding the user's question about whether it's necessary to pass in an iString localizer or iString localizer factory to the constructor, the answer is yes. This is the recommended approach for dependency injection in ASP.NET Core. Finally, the user should ensure that the localization resources are properly set up in the application. This includes configuring the localization services in the startup class. Fun fact, localization is not just about translating text. It also involves adapting content to meet the cultural and linguistic needs of users. So it's a big deal. Now let's look at the answers provided by other users. One alternative approach is to move your shared resource files to the business layer library. Create a folder named resources and ensure the resource path in startup is set to empty. This allows you to use iString localizer in classes outside of controllers. In your shared resource class, implement iString localizer. Inject iString localizer into your business class constructor to access localized strings. For example, you can fetch a message using the localizer in your methods. Here's the tip I promised. Always consider the context in which you're using iString localizer. This will help you decide whether to inject it directly or use the factory method. And there you have it. You can definitely use iString localizer outside of controllers. Remember, understanding how to implement localization can greatly enhance your applications. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tricks.